Greetings, Benjamin J. the Victrola Guy with another in the series. Well, I thought I'd do a quick walk around of the Crucy so you can actually see it uh, now that it's up and running. So uh, most people who see the Crucy in photographs think the base is made of wood. It is not. It is made of cast iron. It is actually quite heavy. And of course, this was the base for some other piece of equipment that was in uh, Edison's lab. And uh, John Crusey, when he built this machine, used a uh, discarded uh, base from some other machine, thus the extraneous holes everywhere. And then he just built the phonograph on this base. So this is identical to the prototype. So I just wanted to do a quick video so you could actually see the machine and all of its components. So it uses a really, really coarse thread, as you can see which really limits your ability to make any kind of uh, in-depth recording on this machine. Uh, Mary had a little lamb fits, but that's really about all. It consists of two separate uh, diaphragms. This is the recorder. These are called phonettes. This is the recorder. This is the reproducer, of course. Now, the recorder, let me back this up, and you can see how coarse these adjustments are. So it's really difficult to fine-tune this machine. Let me focus this a bit. Forgive the mess, there's bits and pieces of tape all over the floor. So there is the recorder and the diaphragm uh, stylus. So there's a steel diaphragm and the stylus is attached directly to it. It's really, really simple. It has uh, about as much flexibility as a pool cue. So it isn't very efficient, but it works, obviously. And it's built in a dovetail that allows you to turn this screw to adjust the depth of the recorder. So I get this focused. There we go. Almost. There we go. So you can see how you can just crank this in and out. And of course, the drawback to the entire process of doing this is after you get it set and you make the recording, you then have to unset it to rewind the mandrel. So once you've made your recording, you come around to this side. And this is the infamous reproducer, and I wanted to show a video of exactly how this works. It is actually quite complex, as you can see. It consists of three different parts. There is the stylus itself, which is right, where am I, right there. I need a pointer for this. And the stylus is attached to a flat spring. And that spring is, of course, right there. Let's see if I can get this thing to focus. There we go. And so the stylus is attached directly to the spring, which is captured in this upright. And on the diaphragm itself, there's a steel base and a pin sticking out that you see. And that pin is just touching the back of that stylus. It's not attached to it. It just touches it. And that transmits the vibrations to the diaphragm. Let me get this thing back in focus. Hold on a minute. No idea what's going on with this. I'm shooting this with my cell phone. So it doesn't want to stay in focus for some reason. Anyway, so it is quite involved for being so simple. So you have the stylus, which is attached to that spring, and then that uh, rod projecting from the diaphragm, and it just touches the back of that stylus. So I made all these parts today. The stylus itself is made of a nail. The upright, the spring, is made from a bobby pin. It has to be spring steel. This is a very fine sewing needle that's been attached to that metal base, which in turn is then glued to that diaphragm. And you can get a shot through the reproducer and there is the diaphragm with that pin or link if you want to call it that 
attached directly to the center and it projects out and just touches the back of that stylus. So you have to uh, align this stuff critically. Align it. It has to be perfectly aligned to make it work at all. And then, of course, you also have to adjust the stylus for not only its depth of cut, but centering it. And to center the stylus, you just move it in the slot. You just tilt it left or right, and then move that link to meet the back of that stylus. Sorry about the problem with the focus. I'm doing this with my cell phone, and it just isn't cooperating. Probably because I have the light on. Uh, so anyway, I just wanted to do a video so you could see this reproducer stylus. It is really simple, but it is really difficult to try to build this thing and then get it all lined up so precisely that it will play the modulation in that groove in tin foil, in this case aluminum foil duct tape. So it is quite an involved machine for being such a simple machine. So I just got this thing built, and this is all built by hand. This took, uh, well, virtually all day today. Is once you build it, you then have to finish it, and then after you finish it, you have to install it. After you install it, you have to adjust it, and then make 50 recordings, making little adjustments with every single recording, not only to the depth, but also the centering. Uh, you can uh, change this position actually quite dramatically surprisingly enough and uh, the way I did that was that if I raise the stylus or lower the stylus I have this link or pin or whatever you want to call this uh, mounted slightly off center so I can loosen the ring on the diaphragm retainer and as I rotate the diaphragm that will change the positioning of that pin and you can bring it back up to center if you raise it, you can bring it down to center if you lower it, you can bring it to center if you move it left or right just by rotating the diaphragm. So it works fairly well, it's just tedious and really really time consuming to get the machine adjusted. Fortunately once it's adjusted it should stay there. Uh, this machine is going to be shipped to South Korea so I've got to uh, make sure that it's uh, packed extremely well you know these uh, all of these adjustments are really really coarse all of them you can see the the threads on these adjustment screws and so to make a precise adjustment is really really difficult and you're talking about movement so small on these knobs that you can just barely see them I mean adjustments like this make a tremendous difference in how this machine works so it is not easy to use at all. It's really simple. It is really, really simple. Its principle is simple. Its components are simple. It's just getting them all lined up and making it work, which is just sometimes a nightmare. I mean, literally, you can uh, start pulling your hair out working on this machine. So you actually have to take a break, go do something else, and come back to it. It is just so demanding. And... Uh, once you get it adjusted, it should stay there. Uh, it would take quite a jolt to move all this stuff. So I'm hoping that once I have this uh, adjusted to my liking, and it's making, uh, obviously I want it to make the best recording it can make, uh, once everything's uh, torqued down, the problem, of course, is to get to any of these components, you have to disassemble this entire phonette. So to even change this or make an adjustment to that stylus, you have to take this entire thing off the base and take the entire base off the machine to get to this thing, especially if you're physically going to remove these two screws. It would be so much easier if they had put these two screws on this side of the bar. That way you could just swing this thing open and make an adjustment, swing it back, and uh, give it a, a test recording. But the way it's set up, it is very, very difficult. Uh, to get it in adjustment and of course I made all these parts so this was a, a, a grand learning experience you know I have never worked on a Crucy prototype tinfoil phonograph before uh, there's probably very few people in the world who have 
but uh, I completely rebuilt this reproducer tonight with uh, parts I got from the Dollar General store. So it's up and running, it's recording, it's uh, playing back. Now it's just a matter of fine tuning it and getting it to work the best it possibly can. So the 1877 Crucy Prototype Tin Foil Phonograph, it's up and running, it's uh, making recordings, it's playing them back, and you can understand every word. So that in itself, I think, is uh, quite an accomplishment for this machine. But I just want to do a, a video so you can see the reproducer and uh, what it entails. Like I said, it's very, very simple, but it is also very, very difficult to use. So I wanted to do a quick video so you can see the uh, Crucy prototype up close. It's a really, really neat machine. And like I said, I feel really honored to be able to work on this thing. I uh, never expected to be this close to a Crucy, let alone actually repairing one. It's been uh, quite an adventure, and I've enjoyed every single minute of it. So, in any case, just a quick video so you can see the Crucy in, in uh, all its glory. Uh, this is it. This is the beginning of recorded sound. Really incredible machine. Absolutely historic. So, as always, if you have any questions, feel free to drop me an email. TheVictroloGuy at gmail.com. And as always, thank you for watching.